Welcome back. We're making our way through the adventure missions here, and we're going to be doing Guide Paradox. The elderly Esther authorizes you to retrieve the videotapes of wonders and secrets. But why you? That's because this researcher from the Department of Insight believes that secrets choose their own witnesses. Oh my. One, two, three. One, two, three. Hmm. One, two, three. One, two, three. Drink. Three, you see? Three are missing. Gotta find these videotapes. I know I am right about this. I may be getting old. I may have forgotten all about the eons. But I keep track of the number of these tapes like my life depends on it. Kid... You came just in time. If you have time, go find them for me. If you don't, I suppose I'll have to get help from those old farts. Old farts? Yeah, there's Wang Tiangwang. I've just met him. Who talks to machine parts all day in the maintenance room. Bernard, in the Department of Galactic Geography who gives nicknames to the scrolls and plants. And there's Gun, who can lie through his teeth without a blink of an eye. Yep, there's an old fart suited to every job. Let's not trouble those old fat elderly people. Good, good. We don't see many accommodating young fellows like you nowadays. However, I have to remind you that the Procedures of these videotapes have implemented some defense mechanism to help protect their secrets. If you are not careful when touching the videotapes, best case scenario is you feel a little dizzy. A little, a little dizzy? And the data transfer may be forcibly interrupted. Worst case scenario, it may cause abnormal behaviors. Like what? Hallucination and paranoia, eventually leading to memory and consciousness disorders. That's just your standard videotapes, then. What? It's a, it's a trap. Not so much of a trap. It's just a result of the constant arms race between researchers vying to be the best at what they do. They simply used a certain kind of technology to turn away those deemed unworthy from accessing information. Malicious baits are deeply embedded in the information by means of flashing visual stimuli and inaudible ultrasound waves, thus manipulating the subconscious to inflict harm on the subject. What the hell? Consciousness, pre-consciousness, and subconsciousness, self, ego, and superego. Imagination, symbolism, reality, and so on. The labyrinth of the human mind is a compulsory subject that almost all space station researchers are proficient in. I'm guessing someone took advantage of the Legion's invasion and snatched the videotapes when the Master Control Zone was unguarded. Yeah, but are they going to be okay at this point then? There are no borrowing records indicating that the suspect is unwilling to expose their identity. There was no sign of damage indicating that they were not trying to destroy those videotapes but to view the secret within. But if they do, won't they fall into the trap? I, it depends what happens, but won't they fall into the trap? The device for playing those videotapes is located in the safe area of the supply zone. If you go there, you may find some clues. Let's go there then and see what we can find. Find lost videotapes. Okay. Let's see here. Supply zone. Let's start over here at the spare parts warehouse. The screen lights up. The supply zone is wide open. But the spacecraft is still under control. The faint glimmers from neutrino explosions stain the platform a shade of yellow. In the disturbing silence, you hear increasingly... Increasingly? Increasingly rapid breathing. Where? I don't see anyone around. Is he in the boxes? Breathe. Run. Open the hatch. Block the navigation interface and move on to the next one. Until you are stopped by a pair of hands. 
They belong to a young geopolitics researcher with eyes like an eagle's. Eagle Castle has been destroyed, he says. What? This is the most direct proof of the power of the eons. In the face of the destruction of the planet, the justice sought by men is laughably insignificant. He lowers his voice. Now that the cosmic route is blocked by that thing, there's no chance you can rush back to your home planet to sound the alarm before the antimatter legion arrives. Cosmic route is blocked by that thing. That sounds exactly what we're doing right now. Like how we're stuck and we need to find the Stellaron. If you do that, you will be intercepted along the way by some evil monster with nothing but the desire to destroy. Promise me, don't go back to die. Stay here, continue our research. The next second, the researcher is pushed aside and an intact aircraft can be seen behind him. Amidst the noise of the liftoff, you hear the geopolitics researcher shout out a name as though... As though you have heard it before on the radio. Sorry. Tired voice comes through from the noisy radio. The space station chose to remain neutral in the evasion by the Legion. No reinforcements will arrive. If you can please return as soon as possible according to the scheduled route. Do you hear me? Hmm. A researcher once left the space station with information. Intermittently, a name is repeated on the cosmic radio. No answer. Take out the videotape. Now, was that a film or... Doomsday? Because that could be several things going on there, but it does sound very similar, again, to what we're going through right now. Hmm. Ooh. Oh, it's a letter from the Comet Hunter. Very well. Come on, videotape. The camera centers on the white table in a conference room. Conference room! And begins to shake slowly. The scene is dense and noisy. Then a majestic voice starts reading a report about the establishment of the Hurt Department of Ge Ge Geopolitics, the Argalactic. Yep. The voice says that when the will of the eons is regarded as the standard, the will of man will withdraw from history accordingly. Huh. That, that to me- Ooh, I like that wood paneling there. That's nice. Um, yeah, that's sounding very Honkai-ish. The problem is that our world favors the eons. You can reap power from their paths. Here. The strong get to make the rules, and power defines justice. Are the Eons the Hershes? Of this universe? Could be. What the Department of Galactic Geopolitics wants to oppose is the status quo of the strong ruling over the weak. Those rights and interests ignored by the Eons will be upheld by us. Those who are trampled will receive our help. We are committed to rebuilding the value of justice for humans in the galaxy. This is the proposal of the two founders, Gun Konolev and Sheila Nova. Very much paying attention to these. It could be a movie we're watching, but just it's got similar feeling, similar story to it that we've seen countless times in Honkai Impact, really. Before the voice finishes, there is already applause and jeers in the conference room. So they are the Kono Levs of the Department of Galactic Geopolitics. During this passionate event, you see countless handshakes in front of the camera until you hear someone call out a name. Sheila, a powerful voice, calls out, accompanied by background noises that are hard to separate from it, as if the inextricably as if inextricably intertwined. Okay. This is the most direct proof of the power of the eons. In the face of destruction of the planet, the justice sought by man is laughably insignificant. While you struggle to distinguish the name Sheila, you are drowned out by the murmurs in the background. 
the end of the video seems to be blurry. We'll go with this one. Those two geopolitics researchers sound familiar. Suddenly you get a splitting headache, forcing you to give up the thought. Take out the videotape. This feels like it's films or TV shows they're making, as opposed to anything story-wise significant. That could be like, ah ha ha, the Honkai. The point of view appears to be falling into empty space without beginning or end. The camera eventually gets focused. Now you're looking at the vast hinterland of the universe through a standard issue navigation visor. In the distance is a bright blue dot, like a condensed water droplet. You recognize it as the Herta space station. The next second, crystallized cracks spread silently across the screen. The dim blue flickers. Monsters spread all over the sky and the silent planet begins to crack slowly apart. And then comes the flashback. From a baby crying in the cradle to the joyous laughter and the resentment in teenage years. And the space station's cold reflection before the final departure. They say your life flashes before your eyes at the final moment of your life. This video undoubtedly records the last moments of a deceased person's life. You struggle to pull yourself out of the immersive dark mud. All you hear is the intermittent cosmic radio. It seems to be calling a name you cannot hear clearly. Clearly. It's amazing, like watching someone's memory. It is still calling the name you cannot hear clearly. Take out the videotape. These videotapes seem to be related. They seem to be records of a different stage of life of the same person. A space radio called Sheila pursued justice for a doomed planet geopolitics researcher. The sentence in your mind suddenly become broken and distorted. I was very confused then. In your vision, the dark cabin gradually becomes distorted and strange get a splitting headache, and then lose consciousness. Oh. Oh dear. This is... the medical cabin of Herta Space Station. You fainted because of contact with improper information. Can you tell me what the information you have been exposed to? Hmm. The life of someone who fought against the Legion. Also the life of a person named Sheila. Whatever it is, I have cleared the mental contamination for you. Now you'd better go for a walk and see if you have any other symptoms. Come with me. Uh, okay. Emergency resolved. Now let's continue. The same problem this time? Well, I seem to keep forgetting things lately. I've told you many times before that it is very normal to forget things sometimes. No, I've been forgetting basic things. Like my birthday, who my friends are, or how I came to the space station. Fine, just to reassure you, I will give you a full body scan using the capsule treatment module this time. There's nothing wrong with your physical functions. On the contrary, they're a little too perfect. Of course, that's your gift. After all, having a talent is not an unusual occurrence, and your talent seems to be your physical health. So in turn, it's only fair that you might have a poor memory. That doesn't seem fair, but okay. With such a perfect physical condition, i better keep this on file. Let me make a record of this. What's your name? Oh yes, uh, Dr. Joanne, my name is... Sheila Nova. Dun dun dun! No, Joanne, it's definitely not ordinary forgetfulness. It's like someone stole my memories overnight. And put them on a videotape, maybe? Hmm. I have some questions that may help you remember. Oh, we have a memory expert here, do we? I'd like to see what treatment you can come up with that even the medical staff don't know. Alright, Joanne, chill. The answer to these questions don't match the videos at all. Okay, so that's gonna that's gonna be going on with that then. So memory expert, 
Aren't you going to cast your memory restoration spell? You sound like you're doing a survey. And what's with these videos? Joanne, chill. Jeez. These videos are records of Sheila's past. As far as I know, all these videos are records of someone's personal experience. You mean those videos you saw are backups of researcher Sheila's life? Can you elaborate on what you saw? It's reminding me of Red Dwarf. They use tape for such, such things like that. It's like, I, I remember it like it was established that they, they did have better ways of storing um, information like on DVDs and stuff like that. But people kept losing them, so they reverted back to using tapes. Yep, it was a comedy show. That's horrible. I don't remember any of these things. It's like listening to someone else's life. I mean, yeah, the whole point is you don't remember anything. That's... Of course you don't. I'll try to sort it out for you guys. So in these videos, Sheena is the founder of the Department of Galactic Geopolitics. And she left the space station and died on the way back to her home planet to warn its inhabitants about the invasion of the Legion. Which doesn't, doesn't match this person in front of us at all. Maybe it's someone with the same name? The Department of Galactic Geopolitics has registered the names of all its staff. I'm sure there's no one with the same name as me in the database. How come you remember this so well? It's very strange. There's also an image that I remember very clearly above all else. Oh? Rows of security monitors loom within a dark room. The scene goes on forever without a beginning or an end. It is as though someone forced this image into my mind, but at the same time, it feels like a complete memory. Ma'am, since fate has brought us together, I have a request. Please help me get to the place in my memories and find those security monitors. I have a hunch that if I can just find those security monitors, everything will become clear. Sure, I'll, I'll help you find it. Hey, don't forget, you are both patients. One has potential short-term amnesia, and the other had a temporary disturbance of consciousness. If you can't find this room at all, then maybe I am losing my mind. So let's 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 go to this location then. Huh? Where is this leading? It's intriguing though. People over there, I see them. So what is this about? The people in the conference room, conference room, are so noisy that you can't even hear what anyone's saying. The fact that everyone's still willing to meet up in such a dangerous place is a glowing endorsement for your department. So your solution is in no way appropriate for our department. You've never even given a single thought to our concerns. Since you have know so much, and do you have a plan that is suitable? We're already at version 12 of the plan. Do you think that's my fault? Or are we supposed to ignore all of your previous poor suggestions? What are we going to do about it now? Egg custard? What do you need egg custard for? I like egg custard. I'll revise that part in the next version. I'll definitely revise it. But yeah, why is that part of it? You know what I think? Endless revision and doing the same work over and over again is the biggest failure of the research process. It's important, though. What are you looking at me for? The revision business wasn't my idea. There's no need to keep listening to this debate. Go back and forth. Because they keep... The key mediator is missing. But who's down here? Is it anyone we know or is it just... Someone else? And you realise that the organiser of the meeting assumes this responsibility. You stride forward and begin delivering the ultimate impromptu speech. I think the version 1 is quite satisfactory. You all can see very well for yourselves whether it meets all the current requirements. The argument abates and the correct answer is within grasp. 
but everyone seems to ignore it. It is precisely by grasping this blind spot that you're able to successfully crack it. The conference room. Conference room draws quiet, and everyone present is roundly saved by version 1. You also get to experience the pleasure of helping others. What is going on? Need you out of the way, really, but okay. Sheila's character introduction. Sheila Nova, guide of the Herta Department of Galactic Geopolitics, is the child of two unidentified justice researchers from the space station. Her parents were both killed in the war against the Lord Ravage's destruction of her home planet, Miniature. Gun Konolev has raised her since birth. She has gotten a proper... What's the one and stuff? Okay. She's gotten a proper and comprehensive education in the field of justice and has made it her mission to propagate the moral ideas of the Department of Galactic Geopolitics. She's always righteous and proper in her conduct and she is never pessimistic in the face of injustice. It's got one and two there. Okay. She runs thought experiments on the ethics in the space station on a regular basis. So notes one, such a fabrication seems so pathetic in contrast to her real life. Two, her code of conduct will be passed down to future generations. Sheena's dialogue lines. One, smiles, my name is Sheena Nova. Two, elegantly, I am only a guide in the Department of Galactic Geopolitics in charge of enforcing the regulations established by the space station's leaders on a regular basis. Three, enthusiastically. I pledge myself to the Department of Galactic Geopolitics and to justice itself, with my health, dreams, and greatest passions. Number four. Sad. I have never left the space station since my birth. I don't think I'll leave the station till my soul returns to the galaxy. So it's just a screenplay? Like, what? what's going on here? The script is exactly what Sheila said when she answered my questions. So she- what? Huh? Okay. So the person is the fabrication? Unlike the video? Did they erase her memories and- What? Oh, you're too late. Everything's been dealt with. What are you doing out here? Gun from the Department of Galactic Geopolitics came and temporarily took over the authority of the medical cabin, saying he knows how to cure Sheila. In return for letting him use the medical cabin, he helped our department compile a list of patients' confidentiality clauses. But that, no matter how influential a visitor he is, they must follow the department's rules. This will greatly improve the privacy of doctors and patients alike. Open the door. You heard her. We are working internally on a patient confidentiality regulation. You look like you're in a rush. Whatever. Our department isn't involved. You can deal with your own problems. Wasn't this about collecting videotapes at one point? What is happening? There's gun. I'm performing treatment on this young guide from the Department of Galactic Geopolitics. Do you two have a good reason for breaking in here? This is treatment? There was a little accident, but nothing serious. She seems to have temporarily lost consciousness, but her vitals are okay. Yes, researcher Joanna. I thought we have already reached the consensus before. Sheila will return to normal very soon, provided that you wait outside. By the way, I haven't introduced myself yet. I'm Gunn, the founder of the Department of Galactic Geopolitics. As you could see, I have the knowledge and authority that matches my age. If you don't leave, I will have security take you away on the grounds of interfering with medical procedures. There's nothing we can do. His authority is higher than mine, second only to the likes of Chief Arlen. Let's wait outside for now. Uh, let's just call the security department on him now. Young lady, why would you say that? Calm down. There seems to be some misunderstanding between us. Either there is, or something really bad is going on. Why do you have my manuscript? I distinctly remember putting it away a long time ago. To tell you the truth, I'm a theatre enthusiast. I've written a play or two myself in my spare time. It's pure fiction. 
I see you have a lot of doubts about me. Why don't we have a chat? Maybe we can be friends. That's right. If you have anything important to say, spill it. I think you have ulterior motives. That's just your personal speculation. Do you have any other evidence? If not, there's no need to continue this conversation. Hmm. My intuition has always been accurate. What are you talking about? Is this another residual effect of watching those videos? The entire thing could be a residual effect of watching the videos. We could still be unconscious on the floor. Right, the videos. What videos? What are you talking about? I saw you on the videos. What? How could you have seen Gun in Sheila's videos? Given their age difference, if you saw a young Gun in the videos, Sheila must have been a baby at the time. But that's not what you saw. Unless the Sheila in front of us now is neither the owner of the videos, nor the real Sheila Nova. Ah, that could be it. If there is a so-called conspiracy of some kind of experiment, then it can only mean one thing. She's impersonating Sheila under false pretenses. Or something else. Hmm. Kind of that is what I'm thinking, unless the experiment is to keep Sheila young forever. Or they remade Sheila? It is sad that in the entire galaxy only the messenger of Abundance has the power to make people live forever. Surely, Mr. Gunn doesn't have this ability? <laughs> you too, I must say, this is all very entertaining to watch. Oh, well, since you found the video, I suppose I can't hide it anymore. Who would have thought this tiny experiment of mine could attract so much interest? What happens next may surprise you, but no matter what you see or hear, please be patient until the end. Hmm. I can't wait. Sheila, reconnect. We have something to ask you. Yes, Mr. Gunn. But I don't feel so good. Sheila, are you, are you okay? Now, you can give me some instructions, like pray, sing, or shout. Be sure to do what I say first. Remember, the instructions include pray, sing, or shout. Ah. Huh. Are you Catherine from Genshin, or, or an equivalent of? Hello, I am Sheila Nova, your guide to the Hurt Department of G Galactic Geopolitics. Sheila Singh? What the heck is going on? Yes, a smart person may have guessed by now. This all happened because I was too idealistic with my initial experiment design. I thought I could restore Sheila to her original self, relying only on a script and some technology. Unfortunately, a limited script will never be able to simulate a person's natural reaction in the real world. So I tried letting her watch videos from the past, hoping that she could get a better understanding of how to be human. But I didn't expect Sheila, or should I say Prototype 157, to become so human. She started to think more and more like a real person. She even realized that another Sheena, who looked exactly like her, once existed in this world. That was when she began to doubt her own existence. This is very dangerous for an android. Ah. Beyond expectation, yet within reason. Stop talking like an art critic. What? No, I... What? That's right, the experiment I referred to is this perfect recreation of a young Sheila standing before you. She was modelled after the co-founder of the Department of Galactic Geopolitics and the love of my life, Sheila Dover. She died in the vast ocean of stars a long time ago. The Star Ocean, you might say. The reason I made Prototype 157 is that I wanted to make up for my regret of not saving my true love when I had the chance. When she found out that she is not a real person, in order to prevent cognitive confusion, I had to erase her memory again and again to restore her settings and maintain her normal operation. Ah, I like this. Like, there could have been so many different ways it could have gone, something malicious, but I, I, I like this trying to recreate someone. The logic there, and again, it's like, there could be an element of this that actually refers back to Genshin. With Catherine, it's possible. It's possible. 
again, it's a multiverse and there is a way to traverse the multiverse, so it's possible. Hmm. But, yeah, you shouldn't deprive her of the ability to think for herself. No, I actually think this deprivation is necessary. When she became aware of her own memory loss and began to ask around for help, the situation could have easily gone out of control. So when I found out that Sheila was being treated by researcher Joanne in the medical cabin, I came as soon as I could to try to fix her cognition once again. How did this fix go? There are many possibilities. Maybe she will finally live according to the script once and for all. Or perhaps she will continue the cycle, fall into another amnesia, that begin to seek help until the next fix. No matter how we deal with Sheila, I beg you, please don't make this experiment public. The ethical issues are bound to be investigated by the Department of Galactic Geopolitics. Please forgive this old man who was just trying to mourn his dead wife. I'm just a bystander. It's not my decision. Twitika, I think you have ch three choices right now. One, tell Prototype 157 the truth about her life. Two, fix and factory reset Prototype 157. Three, destroy Prototype 157 and erase all records of this dangerous experiment from the history of the space station. As the leader of this investigation, it's up to you to make the final decision. As for Gunn, I'll keep an eye on him. I mean, I've got to go with the first one. I want to give her a chance. Have you really thought it through? Please tell Sheila the truth. Well, since you insist, I'll tell Prototype 157 about her story. How she is going to react to that is completely beyond my control. Gunn carries out your decision and leaves the medical cabinet in silence. Triple dot. So what happened? What happened? How do you feel? Like I just had a very long dream. What did you dream about? <laughs> Can an android dream of electric sheep? I dreamed of a cold space station, a lost lover, a huge planet, and a silent radio. So I'm a mechanical replica of a real person. My life is a parody of the dead. My thoughts, my speech, and even my behavior are the product of Mr. Gunn's preset. How ridiculous. After learning that the other me had such a rich life, I wish I had my own birthday, my own friends, and my own dreams. Take your time. Everything will happen in due course. Is it my wish? Or perhaps I do have my own birthday, my own friends, and my own dream. Oh no. There seems to be a problem with her language module. Okay. Her various functional indicators are fluctuating sharply. Thank you, Twitika. I am just a guide in the Department of Galactic Geopolitics. I think there is an even longer dream waiting for me. One where I willingly dedicate everything to the department. Anyway, thank you and farewell, Twitika. Her cognitive module was burned due to the information overload. Seems that telling her the truth was a bad decision. We had to try, though. We had to try. Alas, even the most advanced diagnostic equipment couldn't detect the difference between her and a real person. Except, on the side of her neck, there is a vague mark with the number 157. Can we actually see that? I doubt it's there, but... If it's there, we can't see it. No need to blame yourself. No one could have foreseen this outcome. It's not your fault. Oh, I don't blame myself. I, I wanted to give her a chance, that's all. By the way, you still have Sheila's videos there. It's time to return them to their rightful place. Cheer up, and let everything go back to the way it was. It was worth a try. It was worth a try. Give her a chance of life. If it doesn't work, if it doesn't work. If we're not work. on patrol, we should get some rest. But at least she had a chance. Experience other people's lives with your very own eyes. That's just the charm of those videos. I brought them all back. Three, not one too many. You've worked hard, young one. Sit down and have a rest. In return, I want to tell you a story I heard God knows when. You want to hear it? Go on. Once in the Department of Galactic Geopolitics, there were two well-known young people. 
They were not only comrades in arms with similar interests, but also a couple who pushed each other to become better. They were committed to fighting for the weak and upholding justice for those who tram were trampled by the eons and their factions. Until one day, justice was no longer just an ideal. A Lord Ravager came to the female researcher's hometown, and her home planet was about to be destroyed. For the first time ever, the two disagreed on how justice should be implemented in this scenario. The female researcher chose to return to her home planet alone to alert them of the disaster, but unexpectedly an accident occurred during her journey. At the time, the star ray was blocked by Astelleron, and her spacecraft was also stranded in the path of the Antimatter Legion. In absolute fear, she chose to call the Herta space station for help. However, the space station had chosen to remain neutral in all actions involving the Eons, and the operator responsible for relaying this ruthless message was none other than the male researcher himself. Poor guy. Though the radio, through the radio, he personally witnessed how his stranded lover ran out of oxygen in the damaged aircraft, how she slowly died, drifting into the endless darkness. Oh, that's horrific. For some reason, this tragic story just came to mind today. Thought I'd share it with you. Hmm. The researcher in this story is... <laughs> That's not important. I'm just telling a story. Any resemblance to real life events is purely coincidental. But that's all for today. Please take these rewards. Hope to see you again in the future. Gun has been through a hell of a lot. Poor guy. After all, there are still many secrets in this world waiting to be unearthed. Poor guy. That was a good story. I really liked that. Like, it was very strange as to what was going on at first. But once it all came to light, yeah, I can see why Gun's kind of obsessed with recreating his wife. That's traumatic what he went through. Really traumatic. So, that's as obviously done for this part then. In the next part, we'll see about... Let's go see the signs of Fragmentum. Because we did accidentally stumble into that slightly. So I, I kind of want to see what's going on with that over there. So, we shall see you in the next part. Ta-ta for now.